time for another version of Making the Mix. And this time we're going to look at vocals. So anyways, I have sort of gotten to the point now where I've got drums and bass, and I'm probably going to still tweak that low end a bit later on because I'm going to try to get into the studio later uh, and see if I can tune my low end a little bit more nicely because it's a little bit easier to do that in a studio. That's really what studios are best for. One of the main reasons why you want to mix in a studio so you can get that low end right. I mean, my desk resonates, so you may even be hearing a certain resonant tone in the microphone that comes through. That's my desk. Uh, I'm looking over here. I've got a lead vocal, and I've got it in a, one section here. That's uh, what we call the Samsara section. I got that on one track. And then in the other section, on the, on the It's Real section, I've got that on another track. So Because I had a slightly different vocal setting for these two, because I, I sing harder on the, the chorus thing than I do on the verse thing. So there were a couple of slightly different settings with that, and so I got two different uh, tracks for that. First of all, let's sort of just concentrate on the Samsara vocal and sort of look at it real quick. I want to get in a little closer here. Uh, I recorded this on a really good microphone, a C12. I had a really good vo uh, vocal chain for this. I uh, had an LA two-way to do a little bit of light limiting on it. But even so, even with all that, I still have a fairly dynamic vocal here. You can see there's a lot of uh, there's a little, a lot of justice from these peaks all the way to these things. That's a word here, so that's kind of low. Uh, so, anyways, I'm not, I haven't really put anything on this track yet. Uh, I haven't even looked at um, the pitch yet. Uh, and I sang this, and maybe I'll, I might want to do a little pitching. And if I want to do pitching, I'm going to want to do that sooner than later. So, first of all, let's just put this in the track here and just see what happens, because uh, uh, I just want to see if my levels even where I even where I want to start from. So let's listen. I never asked for a mountain It just came to me I woke up with a mountain Between me and the deep blue sea Okay, that's kind of loud. Um, I'd like to sort of come up underneath the drums a little bit more. I don't wanna, and I know I'm probably going to be adding some stuff to this vocal, probably. So that's already pretty loud, though. When I, when I hear it just like that, the vocal sounds a little bit more. It makes the drum sound smaller. I want those drums to still sound pretty big. So I'm going to tuck the vocal back a little bit. I'm going to go over to, to clip gain. And let's knock them back down about, oh, let's try like 3 dB. And let's just hear this. I never asked for a mountain. It just came to me. Woke up with the mountains between me and the deep blue sea. That's closer to where I want to start. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. So I do have some soft words here. I've got a couple of things. I'm, uh, at this point, a lot of times with the vocal, before I get... Uh, too far down the line, I, I'll, once I set my basic level into a place that I like, uh, then I might go back and I might sort of dig up some words. And for instance, I might go in here with, with uh, Deep Blue Sea. Let's just check this line out real quick. I woke up with the mountains between me and the Deep Blue Sea. I might want to bring up uh, this Blue Sea just a little bit. So I'm going to come in a little bit. Uh, yeah, I might just do this on a couple of things like this. And what I would do is just isolate this. I would use Command E, Command E in Pro Tools, and that would separate that. Then I can go here and clip gain and just give it a goose. Now let's just play this line here. I never asked for a mountain, it just came to me. I woke up with the mountains between me and the deep blue sea. Well, the blue came out a little bit loud, but the sea I liked. So let's just take this. Uh, we'll do another as isolation here, and we'll zoom in a little bit, and we'll just take the blue back down a little bit. And we can, you know, you can actually kind of go down a real rabbit hole with this. Uh, but I'm just going to do some of this, but just for for an example. Here. Yeah, the deep blue sea. Okay, I like that. Oh, actually, that's the deep I fix. I want the blue to come down a little bit. Yeah, the deep blue sea. Blue, because the blue gets a little bluey. So let's uh, isolate that. Bring that down a little bit. Maybe about so much. So. Between me and the deep blue sea. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then I might just go ahead, uh, just to be really, really kind of tidy. I'll just do a little light crossfades in any on these points that I've gone ahead and done stuff. 
So let's just hit those real quick. So that's all going to be smooth. Uh, I'm, I probably don't have any weirdness there. Anyways, I might go through this whole tune and do that, for instance. Um, but I'm just not going to, I'm going to sort of uh, rock on with this because that's kind of, you know, this, that's not much fun to watch or listen to somebody doing. We can get really close with just doing the other stuff I want to do anyway. Uh, let's say though, just for the sake of argument that we listen to this vocal and we go, well, um, oh, Mr. Singer, you sang kind of out of tune, buddy. Uh, so you might want to melodyne or auto tune. And I recommend doing this stuff early in the game. So you can be, there's two kinds of schools of thought with auto tune and which is one, which is to put it into the vocal chain and have it pretty much just in the chain running the whole time uh and just which uh just as a plug-in and yeah some people do that and then and it's just sort of like putting a lot of mayonnaise on your sandwich just way too much mayonnaise but these folks do that and that's apparently kind of popular i'm more of the mind of that if i'm going to do pitch correction i want to do it early and then i want to print it and so i'm not making a, a, an auto-tune or a melodyne device which take a lot of freaking cpu people uh, make that work all the time while I'm mixing something. That's just crazy. So um, what I would probably do at this point is I happen to have Melodyne. And let's just, let me just show, show you what, how we can do a Melodyne move here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put, patch in, go down to other. I got my Melodyne. Hello, Melodyne. Uh, which I recommend, by the way. I just think Melodyne is a pretty nifty thing if you if you use it with soul and don't just like, again, use it like mayonnaise on a hoagie man that's just nuts all right so we got melodyne right now i have a blank page i have a button called transfer and uh let me check my algorithm set it to the default of melodic i like that i got a transfer button so let me go back over to my page here let me get this out of the way for a sec and i'm going to go ahead and get this uh i'm just going to go get this first verse so let's highlight that and I am going to put that into Melodyne. So, because Melodyne doesn't really go like a plug-in per se. What you have to do is you have to sort of put it into Melodyne and then Melodyne superimposes it over the track that you have there. Um, that's why you have to do any kind of um, level fixes first before you do the Melodyne. That's why I did that first, then Melodyne. Okay, so Melodyne here, let's gonna bring it back. Let's put it into transfer mode. And you don't hit it, you don't, you don't play record. That's sort of the record button for this. And hit play. I never asked for a mountain, it just came to me. I woke up with the mountains between me and the deep blue sea. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I wanna be. I listen hard to the mountain, it said nothing to me. So I climbed up a mountain, it was the only way to break free. Climbing up on the mountain, I might edit all this out, I don't know, we'll see. About the sea. But you might like my dance here. That mountain, all my wood was ever gonna, all my wood was ever gonna, all my wood oh, was ever gonna be. Alright. So, as you can see, that sort of threw itself into there. Look at all this. It looks like some kind of crazy hieroglyph and kind of cool. All right, here is, uh, here's that first part uh, basically put into Melodyne. And now the Melodyne track sort of is riding parallel on top of this track. For instance, if I go in and mess with my lead vocal track and sort of like try to play with, uh, do the, like I just did just a minute ago, isolating areas and changing the clip gains, it won't change a thing. Um, I'm, I won't do anything until I write this in. So, anyways, look at look at this real quick. Let's see how I'm how I did. So, as you can see, I'm a little flat on this one. No. I can sort of then sort of lay it right into tune. Uh, if I put it into this, uh, if I click on this, I can uh, freeze it. it. It'll sort of go by increments from where that is relatively. But I'm sort of going to do some. I'm just going to slide everything. So if I take it out of pitch grid, then I can slide this. So let's see how that sounds. I never asked for a mountain. I never asked. 
Let's really take that out of tune seriously as like and see what happens. Never ask for a mountain. Right, let's try it up like I'm here. Never ask for a mountain. How about way up here? Never ask for a mountain. Ah, oh, we don't want to do that. We're I gonna bring it back to this B flat. I like that just about there. I never asked for a mountain. Ever. I never asked for a mountain. It just came to me. I woke up with the mountains between me. So, anyways, as you can see, I can kind of go down here and and slide notes around as much as I need to. Uh, if anything's bugging me, um, so a lot of times when I do a vocal track. Uh, I'm actually okay with a lot of the out of tune stuff, but uh, unfortunately, once I start getting really close to it and I start listening very closely to it and it's exposed like this, and I go, ooh, I would like to make that kind of a little flatter or sharper. So, yeah, so I will go through the track and I'll go through the process of maybe finding some of these notes that are not quite in the pocket and, uh, and just sort of make sure I get the ones that I know that are, are, are more exposed that I don't like. And the nice thing about Melodines is it's kind of forgiving. When you slide these things around, it doesn't sound too uh, it doesn't sound too messed up. It doesn't sound like I really mess it up like auto tune. Auto tune when it's really on choosy mode, it, it gets that sound that a lot of people uh, like nowadays. That's really very popular, which is that really sort of uh, locked in sort of synthetic tint sound. You can get that with this too. We can make that more synthetic, but um, I'm not trying for that effect for this tune. Um, I'm just trying to sound like me, man. You know, playing man, jeez. Do your Melodyne work, do all your pitched work, make sure that's all good. Uh, do any kind of clip gain work that you want to do. So now your lead vocal is in a state that you can deal with it. You've got your basic level where you like it. And let's sort of double check to see what we like this basic level. Climbing up on the mountain, made me forget about the sea. I started thinking that mountain, all my wood was ever gonna. All my wood was ever gonna. Hey, that comes out a little bit. Let's pull that one back. That's my little sort of answer one that I didn't have the breath for on the other one. I'll pull my other double back too, because I kind of like starting from this point though, because it's so it sort of it feels like it's sort of loud in the be loud in the mix, but it's sort of riding a little bit behind the drums, uh, and I'm probably gonna end up bringing that vocal up when I start doing some stuff I'm about to do. All right, let's say that my vocal is there. Let's get back over here, and now let's talk about making. Um, uh, a vocal chain. So let me take uh, the Melodyne off. And so the vocal chain that I'm going to start with, this is my vocal chain. It's kind of similar to what uh, others like to do. The first item in the vocal chain at the very top, I'm going to take it down here to harmonic and I'm going over to lo-fi. And lo-fi is an, uh, sort of like the secret weapon of a lot of uh, producers. You get lo-fi out and you look at this and it's kind of cool. You have basically this linear quantization, adaptive quantization, uh, distortion, noise, and saturation. And so let's put this a little bit. And what I like to do is just put a little bit of noise and a little bit of maybe a little bit of saturation on the vocal. And what that's going to do is that's going to just basically all of a sudden take my vocal and it's going to add upper frequency energy to the vocal that I can then take away. I'll probably be taking some of that away when I start sculpting it with the EQ. I might not want all of that, but it's basically just going to light up some upper energy because that's what happens when you get distortion. You have distortion, you're clipping a little bit, you're clipping the waveform, you get when you clip the waveform, you make it more of a square wave. When you do that, you get more odd harmonics. I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do to my vocal a little bit. And so it's not going to be a super noticeable thing, but I'll, I'll let, me, let me play my vocal and you'll sort of, I'll do it crazy and then you'll, I'll back it off. All right, let me make sure I am where I am here. Let's go back to the beginning and let's zoom in just a little bit here. All right, let's get you over in the corner here. All right, vocals up. I never asked for a mountain. I'm going to really pour it on here real quick. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. No 
See how that gets really super noisy when I crank it up to 82%. All right, um, I'm gonna push up this up. I just want you guys to hear this, the extremes of this real quick. Let me do it with the distortion. I never asked for a mountain, it just came to me. I woke up with a mountain between me and the... And let's hear it with a saturation. I never asked for a mountain, it just came to me. I woke up with a mountain. Anyways, these are kind of uh, some serious like tweezers we're using here. What I like to do is just a little bit of distortion. I said noise earlier, but what I meant was distortion, a little tiny bit of saturation. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to put a little bit, about two or three, and about one point of this. And I'm going to bring it in and out. I'm going to go to bypass it and bring it in and out, just so you can hear the difference. I never asked for a mountain. It just came to me. Here's without it. Woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. Bring it in. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? Okay, that's too much. Let me just really knock that super back. I'm going to take the saturation out. Put point 0.1 saturation. All right, back to the beginning. I never asked for a mountain. It just came to me. I pass. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. You see how it just lights up some high end on the vocal here. So I asked the mountain. I pass. Why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. So let me back to the beginning here. I never asked for a mountain, it just came to me. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. So when I actually want to just put that one little tiny bit of distortion in there, it just gives me just a tiny bit of extra top end stuff that I can use. So I'm just going to do that little bit. And I don't know if you were able to notice that when I brought it in and out. Um, but anyways, it just again, it's just a way of adding some some coloration that I can possibly use later. Again, I can also always get rid of it. So that's my first thing I'm gonna put into the vocal chain. Next thing I'm gonna put in the vocal chain is a compressor. Uh, now, you, there's two schools of thought of this, and you can, and I, I might even change my mind about this next time I do something. But if you put an, e an EQ in before the compressor, uh, then, of course, whatever you bring out of the EQ, whatever frequencies you bring out of the EQ, they're going to be the things that hit the compressor first. I'm going to put it in the, the good old 1176 here, and that's one thing I like to use for this, is just this good old guy right here. So I'm going to put this on. I'm going to just have not a super fast attack. I'm going to roll it back off a little bit, and not a super fast release, just sort of but not super slow, just sort of a little, you know, medium to, to regular. Just keep it at four to one. And what I really, all I want to do with this is I'm just going to try to get this to sort of bring down, you know, bring down some peaks about three or four dB, and then I'm just going to lift up maybe my overall level, and I'm just going to narrow, uh, I'm going to sort of make that a little bit narrower uh, dynamic range on my voice. And, and also this sort of gets a certain character that I want to get, uh, that I happen to like, so. I never asked for a mountain, it just came to me. Turn it up. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. Now you can see when it gets to the deep blue sea, it's not even registering. It's only hitting when it's getting kind of a little bit. I never asked for a mountain, it just came to me. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. And that's kind of what I'm looking for it to do. I just wanted to sort of ride herd on some of the loud, about, about 3D, just sort of ride it. So I'm getting a little bit of, just this little little squishing here. Um, I still have some transients here. It's not too crazy. I'm not losing my transients, but anyways, let's go. Uh, I'm going to bring out the output now a little bit. I never asked for a mountain. It just came to me. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? a little too loud. I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. I listened hard to the mountain, it said nothing to me. So I climbed up a mountain, it was the only way to break free. Climbing up on the mountain made me forget about 
pass it. Started thinking that mountains. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this and put it on the other All My World Was Ever Gonna. Uh, I kind of like the setting. It's working for me so far. It's doing what I wanted to do, which is basically just writing this thing. I still have some other things I want to do. I never asked for a mountain. It just came to me. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. So I asked the mountain. In. I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. The vocals aren't sticking out all of a sudden. They're just sort of, they're, they're finding a sort of a level and just kind of and hitting it and going out. And that's what we're always ultimately looking for in compression. So sort of just, we're making a little rubber band room ceiling for the vocals. So it can hit this thing and just sort of, sort of flex up against it. And just, if we, we can sort of con now contain it a little bit better. All right, so now we get that. Let's go for an EQ. So I'm gonna get a nice EQ out. Let's get an ozone out, just the good old ozone nine. Now we're gonna sort of see if we can't dial in and, and make the, the make more body of the t and tone from the vocal. Cause I got, I think I got a good vocal tone already, but I, I think I want a little more presence of the vocal. So I'm gonna maybe try to dial in a little more warmth and maybe just a little bit more Christmas too. So we'll just sort of see what's, what's going on with the vocal here. I never asked for a mountain. It just came to me. First thing though, I want, you might want to notice is you, if you look over here in the, um, if you look over at um, 60 dB and below over here, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on on my vocal mic, on my vocal mic, y'all. So I'm gonna have to filter that out. I mean, I don't know. Let's see if you can actually hear that. I'm gonna crank that up. Um, I'm just gonna solo my lead vocal before the vocal even comes in or something. I mean, see that? It's not, I'm, I'm not even singing yet. Here, let's just solo that. This. Look at that. So underneath 60, all of this is happening um, on my vocal track. And then when the vocal track's happening, let's look at it when the vocal track's Ask happening. Ask for a mountain! It just came to me! I woke up with a mountain between me and... Okay, right, I, I can tell you folks, we don't need that. That's not going to help the mix. That's going to... And the vocal's going to be a big part of my mix. It's going to be front and center as much as I can make it. That's going to mess up my low end. I guarantee it. So I'm going to filter that right the heck out. In fact, I'm going to filter it probably right up to about here at least. All right, let's hear this. Ask for a mountain! It just came to me. I'll bypass it. I woke up with a mountain. You probably can't even hear me that. And the deep blue sea. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I wanna be. Let's see if we can dial in a little warmth now. But I'm gonna get the band back in now because I, I wanna make these kind of EQ decisions now with the drums and with the bass because I'm starting to add bass stuff here on the vocals and so I want to make good decisions let's get it out of, out of solo mode Ask for a mountain it just came to me I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea So I asked the mountain why'd you come and find me I never wanted a mountain between me and the one Okay, I'm liking that just to give a little little warmth to it. Now let me get a little bit of to, a little bit of. I'm thinking I'm gonna do a little bell curve up here, just on some around five, just to get a little bit of. I'd like to hear a little air on this vocal. As for a mountain, it just came to me. I woke up with a mountain between me and the deep blue sea. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. I listened hard to the mountain, it said nothing to me. So I climbed up a mountain, it was the only way to break free. Climbing up on the mountain made me forget about Started 
just came to me. I woke up with the mountains between me and the deep blue sea. So I'm getting a little bit of S, extra S out of this bargain, um, but I'm getting air on the vocal. I can now, yes, I can come back later and just lop off a little bit of Sing with the de -esser. Um But I'm not getting over 10K and stuff like this. I just put a little bump around 5K. Uh, yeah, I might do a little de-essing on the back end just to get rid of the, the, the little S's. But hey, not bad, right? It does sound, it's sounding better. The vocal has a nice presence to it. I'm kind of digging it. Uh, as we get closer to a final mix, I'm then going to be doing vocal rides on the uh, the faders to sort of get make sure that that certain lines are, are riding up and above things. But if I do my job right, if I do it pretty well, and I build the mix around this vocal, bass, and drums, I shouldn't have too much trouble with that. I can I'll be taking away frequencies from other instruments to make sure that this is copacetic. So let's go ahead and check this out. I've also made a vocal spreader and a vocal reverb. And so for my vocal reverb, I have um, what I've got for this. I've got uh, a, a convolution, which is a concert hall um, from my IRL, from my, my Waves program, which I kind of like as a really nice, warm concert hall thing. Um, one of the things I am looking for for a vocal reverb is generally something that's got warmth to it. So I can add warmth to the vocal without adding EQ so much to the vocal. I may, if I get, in fact, get good from stuff from this, I may roll it back off of the EQ. Um, and then I've got my spreader over here, which the spreader, let me let me show you this real quick. And this you probably read about in our in the book. And this, uh, this is just basically a stereo delay going left and right here. And on one side, I've got 70 milliseconds. One side, I've got 80 milliseconds. So they're they're pretty close. It's really a very close. I might even bring that up to 90 or 100, but very, very, very quick early reflections. Uh, not the same distance on left and right, just slightly different so that it's just not, it's not, they're not perfectly symmetrous. They're slightly off a little bit that way. And I like it usually something like a 70, 80, maybe 75, 85. Something like that kind of works for me for a spreader. Uh, and I'll just probably be bringing that in. Well, let me show you how that sounds real quick. All right, so let's try first the spreader. I'm going to, and I, uh, again, how did I make that happen? I used two aux inputs, two stereo aux inputs. I made sure that they are assigned to the vocal bus. Uh, again, a big mistake a lot of people make right here is that they'll assign, the, they won't assign these and they'll just come, be coming out to the monitor and you'll hear it and you'll mix it and you'll hear it and you won't even know that they're not there until you hear the mix and they weren't in the mix. Put them in the vocal bus. So I've got my inputs. I made buses for them. I did the usual thing. Uh, and then I made sends. And then these sends are all, I haven't got anything going them to them yet. They're pre-fader sends. I have, I'm not doing post-fader right now. Let's go ahead and bring up the lead vocal here and just see how this sounds in this, in this thing. Why'd you come and find me? I never wanted to make I'm not sure I'm going to use this on this, but I want you to hear it. I listen hard to the mountain. It said nothing to me. So I climbed up a mountain. It was the only way to break free. But it's cool. It puts a little bit of a shadow behind it. This sort of like gets a little of a sense of a space. Like it's not a large space. It's just kind of a, almost a little bit narrow. But it just sort of gives it, it just takes it off of being dry. Um, so let's take that back out again. Let's bring up the other the reverb. Let's see how the, how the reverb sounds with this. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. I listened hard to the mountain, it said nothing to me. So I climbed up a mountain, it was the only way. I'm kind of liking this one because it sort of makes sense to me with the drums. The drums, I think I'm going to have them do a bigger room too. It feels like these things should be filling up a space. And I'll notice that when I bring this in. So I ask the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never walk in a mountain between me and the one place. I find that's more satisfying to me than the close thing. I, the, the I think this vocal needs to be out in a space like this. And I like this space. I'm going to work with this for now and see if I, if I like it more later. 
the one in... So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. I'm going to sort of just stick it in there for now so I sort of can feel it, get a good feeling for it, um, and have that in the mix. Now, one more thing I might want to do is I might put another compressor on the vocal, or I might actually make a parallel compressor for the vocal, so I don't I can sort of maintain this here uh, as it is, but also have a compressed vocal sort of underneath it. Um, but first, let's go ahead and see what happens if I do one more compression on this one. And this kind of, this time, let's go ahead and get a different one, and let's go for the vintage compressor. All right, so let's put this on the vocal and see if this is something we like here. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. Let's bring this threshold down. I listen hard to the mountain, it said nothing to me. So I climbed up a mountain, it was the only way to break. So I asked the mountain, why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. I listened hard to the mountain, it said nothing to me. So I climbed up a mountain, it was the only way to break free. Climbing up on the mountain made me forget about So you can see this takes a while you might and you, you start doubting yourself you start wondering am i really making a difference here is it really helping and when you get to that point then you can sort of stop and say well i'll just stop doing what i'm doing it's not necessarily necessary at this point um, right now i really do feel like my vocal sounds pretty good without this ozone i'm going to sort of take it out for right now it, it seemed like it was kind of doing some cool stuff but i wasn't really feeling like it was doing anything important for me right now I feel like I've got, uh, I'm well served by my chain that I have so far, uh, which basically consists of the lo-fi, doing just a little tiny bit of distortion, then going to my 1176, which is basically just give it, just lopping off and, and sort of giving it a, you know, a very nice sort of squishy sort of a, a thing happening there. Come on. Yeah, this here. Uh, so I asked the mountain. Why'd you come and find me? I never wanted a mountain between me and the one place I want to be. Yeah, the, the, I really noticed this thing helping me a lot more than I was help, noticing the ozone. So anyways, I think I've got a pretty good vocal thing to start with here. Let me double check my other vocal parts here, see what's going on. I've got this all, all my world was ever going to be, this, this sort of answer here. Let me make sure that's at an acceptable place and level. All my world was ever going to, all my world was ever going to, my world was ever that's a little loud again. Let's just get that guy down lower. Uh, in fact, listen, you know what? I can't reach that um, uh, fader over there. So I'm going to do it right here. Just do a little Command E. We can sort of stick that guy off to the side a little bit. So it's over here, maybe. Yeah, I like that a little up to the side like that. Hey, let's check this other vocal now. Let's see what's going on with this. And what we may end up just doing is copying all these other guys over there. So let me go try. In fact, let's just do that. Well, well, let's let's get, not get ahead of ourselves. Let's listen to this thing first. Let's get rid of the double for a sec. Now 
when you listen to that vocal, you notice it's uh, that it's a harder vocal. There's a harder edge to the sound of it. So I'm definitely going to want to have a slightly different EQ of that than the other one. And then I'm really patting myself on the back for having a different track for this. So let's go ahead and copy those items over, but I'm going to do some uh, other stuff to it. So I'm just going to take Option. I'm going to hit the Option key and drag these items over to the next side here, like so. And let's just sort of see what let's see what that does to the sound first before I do anything to it. All right, let's just add. Sounds good on it, actually. All right, so let's sort of take this fundamental uh, EQ that we had and see if we can sort of find that little bit of that edgy part and get rid of it. Up a little bit. When it's real, it's a long time coming round, and you feel like you're never going down. And it's real, took a long time, now you're everywhere. While right here, let it go, let it go. So yeah, you can sit here and diddle around and you just sort of have to sort of find, you know, sort of what's bugging you, what's making it better for you. And you play with it until you kind of get something you like. And that's kind of where I've done here with this. With this, I feel better about it. When it's Let me see what my compressor is doing. It feels like it's maybe pulling it a little much. When it's yes, and I am correct. When it's Right, let's get the double in, see how that's going. When it's real. A little loud, let's get that let's down a little bit. When it's real. Still too loud, bang it down. When it's real. When it's real.
I'm liking that. I like the level that I've got here. I could probably maybe dial in a little bit more different EQ on that vocal double, but I'm going to wait and see if I really need to once I start getting the band in. Once I get the band in, if I feel like my lead vocal is getting beat up a bit, uh, I might go ahead and dial in some more heavy, uh, some more stuff or maybe even some distortion on that double to help that guy get a little more settled. Uh, but still, I'm just right right now. I'm just trying to get everything sort of settled with the vocals. Oh yeah, let's 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 address the whole uh, reverb situation here. When it's real, it's a long time coming round. Let's see what that sounds like in the spreader, real quick. I'm gonna put that in the spreader. Let's put a little bit of that on the on the uh, on this other guy too. When it's real, it's a long time and you feel and here's another thing you could see, think about doing. Maybe um, well, let's also consider taking this lead and keeping it dry, not putting it in the spreader, and just having the double in the spreader. Let's see what that sounds like, because that might keep our lead guy up front in a nice way. When it's real, it's a long time round, and you feel like you're never going down. And it's real, took a long time, now you're everywhere. While right here, let it go, let it go now. I think I might be a little hot on that lead vocal. Let's back it off just a little bit on the alpha here. When it's I don't want to hear a big reverb on this section. I like the idea of the vocal being a little more present and in your face and we get the double. I think the lead with the double and the double being in the spreader is going to work for me pretty good. When it's real, it's a long time Let me back that up a little bit. Go ahead and get a little EQ on that double real quick. And, and, and let's go ahead and put a, 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 we should go ahead and do an EQ. Let's just do the regular seven band here. And let's just roll off some high end on this so we don't get too much extra S's and stuff. And a little, just put a little warmth in here. And let's just now, that make, put a little, put this guy on there too, to control it. When it's real, it's a long time coming round, and you feel like you're never going well, really, down. Let's really push it in there. So it's really, real. really being blocked. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking having that, the double being pretty well squeezed and EQ'd out. So there's not so much, it's not so much S's in there. I took the S's out before the compressor, so it's not gonna hit the compressors. That's gonna work great. When it's real, it's That's gonna work great. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about the vocal right now. Let's double check the end here. There's some yelling in here. Let me sort of make sure my levels are good. I'm liking that. Um, this well, well, right here. Let it go, let it go, no. 
We might be losing the bass a little bit there, but we'll come back around for that. All right, so basically we've got our vocal kind of set in though, and we haven't really got into the backgrounds. And at this point, I think I want to wait on backgrounds. One of the processes of mixing is that you do some stuff and then you go back in and go, well, that means I need to go back and fix something I did earlier. And it's, again, it's iterative. You sort of do one thing and that changes the process. What you want to do, try to do is make sure that doesn't go tumbling down, down the mountain, tumbling, tumbling down the mountain. We don't, that's what we want to try to avoid happening here. I've got pretty much things where I need them. Next up are guitars. So I'll see you on making the mix uh, part five. Thanks a lot. See you soon.